Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video we're going to talk about my top seven mistakes when purchasing a vintage classic Volkswagen Beetle. Let's get to it. Okay, so these are my top seven mistakes that people make and you know, these are not set in stone. I want to hear from what you guys think. And uh, you know, if you have any additional mistakes that people make, please put them in the uh, the comment section below this video. I'm trying to keep this video short and sweet and concise, uh, but these are pretty much the top mistakes that people make when it comes to purchasing a Volkswagen. But you know, before we get to that, please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will be bringing you videos uh, each and every week. At least I try to. Uh, we are busy here at Classic VW Bug, so uh, please be patient if I don't put out something uh, frequently. Let's get to it. Number one is impulse buying. Guys, I see this constantly. Uh, guys will, guys and gals will browse on the internet and they want a vintage Volkswagen Beetle and they are encapsulated or enthralled, should I say, by the look and the pictures of the Beetle. They'll look at the color. It looks so nice and shiny. Oh my God, it's so clean. The pictures are magnificent. You know, look at that blurred background and the car is in focus and everything looks so great through the, the pages of the internet and uh, all of a sudden, boom, you hit the buy now button. You don't even negotiate and you buy this car, you ship it in and it's nothing like what was in the pictures. Uh, so that's number one, this constant impulse buying today. Yes, because we live in an Amazon world, we live in an eBay world where it's instantaneous buy now button and I have seen that. And uh, so that's a scary situation right there. Number two, not thoroughly inspecting the car first. Uh, so if you're buying through the internet, um, you know, you're not close to the car, maybe you're halfway across the country or across the world, and you cannot go physically to go look at the car and inspect it. Uh, so if you cannot do that, uh, you want to hire somebody like a classic car inspector. There's plenty of them online. You might pay two, three hundred bucks, maybe more, but that's a drop in the bucket compared to, say, dropping thousands of dollars and getting the car. And it's not what you uh, anticipated. Uh, so ways around going through an inspector is maybe, you know, jump online in uh, the Facebook forums, Vintage Volkswagen Club of America, you got um, the V-Dub Hub, you got old timers, you got dub fellas, you got a lot of different groups out there on Facebook where you can post an ad to say, hey, is there anybody in the St. Louis area, anybody in the San Diego area, anybody in the New York, Hudson Valley area, New Jersey, Connecticut, whatever, wherever the car is that can go see this car for me and I'll pay you. You might not, you know, you don't have to pay them as much as a true inspector, but you would like them, you know, to build some trust maybe and talk to this person and say, hey, look, you know, I'm in the VW community and can you help me out? And there might be somebody in, in the clubs or something that can go see this for you. Sometimes they might do it for free. You know, I've, I've put out posts before online and people have seen the cars for us. So, and that has worked out well. If the car is not across state lines, then go see it physically in person get in your car and go drive and go see this car up close and personal. Nothing beats a physical uh, encounter with a vintage Volkswagen Beetle. You want to see the car up close and personal. There is nothing better than that. Pictures only say so much. Pictures can look a hell of a lot better online than in person. So number three, not meeting the seller in person. Uh, or at least chatting with them on the phone. I hear people that go through the internet or go through eBay or find a Craigslist ad or, or the Samba ad or Facebook ad and they buy the car without actually even speaking to the person physically on the phone or in person, face to face, frontal lobe, frontal lobe, eye to eye. That goes a long way because personalities change when it's face to face. You know, there's a lot of hate crap that's on the internet these days, of course, and everyone's button mashing behind the computer screen. They're a lot tougher behind the computer screen. And, um, you know, a lot of sellers might put that dealer cap on and they're a lot tougher behind the screen than they are in person. So uh, negotiation goes better in person than behind the computer screen. So if you can do this or at least FaceTime, which is a good thing to do, or Skype and have a, you know, a virtual tour or examination of the Beetle, that's better than not even talking to the person, you know, in general. You know, I know texting and emailing is a little more comfortable for some people, but to make the right buy, 
you need to be either face to face or on the phone. So uh, that's number three. Number four, not checking paperwork, title, VIN numbers. You know, guys, you gotta have all that stuff in order. And if they do have historical paperwork, all that is a bonus, right? That always brings the value up on the vehicle and will always appreciate later on. So you want to make sure your title and paperwork stuff is in order. I've seen people buy Beatles and all of a sudden they exchange the money and then they ask, oh, can I see the title? Oh, I don't have a title. I just got a bill of sale. No, no, no. Now you're too late. You've already exchanged the money. Now it's more difficult to take that money back or get a refund. Um, that is in the negotiation process as well. Uh, if there's no title, uh, you know, you have uh, leveraging power to negotiate there. You need a title and bill of sale. Many states are, are lenient. Some states are not. And you really got to be, uh, you got to do your homework when it comes to your state DMV policies. Uh, so make sure your title uh, is is clean that there is no other writing on it you know many times they might have had a previous uh, so-called uh, buyer come in and that buyer signed their name on the title and then it never went through and so they held on to that title and want to pass it on to you and that other person's name is in the buyer section it's void you cannot do that uh, and you cannot erase you can't cross out you can't white out uh, that title so that is void and then the seller has to then get a duplicate title now you run into a problem sometimes where uh, some sellers will skip and not register uh, the title um, uh, under their name and then it's still under the previous person's name who they bought it from so now you got to go back to that guy which might be even more difficult so you got to make sure your title stuff's all in order and make sure the vin number on the title matches the VIN on the chassis and the body and you want to make sure that all the body and chassis match. I have plenty of videos on that uh, but I've seen time and time again where the title uh, has the VIN number of the engine on the title not the VIN on the chassis or body. Now you run into an issue with your state if you can change that number. Uh, I live in New York and as long as I show proof, scratch off of the VIN, a picture of the real VIN and show it to uh, the DMV agent, they can then change that. So you have to look into that too. That's, you know, make sure the VIN on the chassis, the body match, and make sure that number is on the title and correct. And there's no letters in a VW, a, a Beetle VIN number. So uh, just definitely be cautious of that. I've seen some wacky stuff out there. Number five, having a budget aside when it comes to buying a vintage bug. Uh, I know there's plenty of bugs out there that are restored either by a father-son team, it's a backyard house home job, or even done by a professional. You still should have a budget aside when it comes to buying these cars. You're not going to just buy this car and everything's going to be great. These are old cars, 40, 50, 60 years old, maybe 70 years old, and there's things that are going to happen. Uh, things are going to break down, uh, things are going to malfunction, and you're going to have to dip some money into repairs. It's the nature of the beast with these cars. The car could be restored to the tip-top most condition, but things will happen. We deal with the aftermarket parts today, and those parts also fail. So you, d you need to understand, I would suggest, don't go into debt buying a classic car or the vintage Beetle. Um, definitely save up your money. Have enough of a budget aside. Uh, to, to purchase these vehicles because uh, they could be money pits and don't go into debt. I don't agree with debt. I just got out of debt uh, last year and it's the best feeling in the world, guys. I've had business debt for a little while, uh, so I finally have no debt and it is a wonderful, wonderful feeling to not have debt. Buy cash when you can. Uh, don't really, uh, don't put it on your credit card. You know, I know there's classic car financing companies out there. Uh, but if you have the cash, do it. If you don't have the cash, do not buy the car because it could be a real money pit. So uh, just have a budget aside when it comes to uh, uh, buying uh, the vintage bug. Number six, not doing your homework. Guys, there is no excuse today in not doing enough homework. There is plenty of information out there. Google, YouTube are your friend. If you do not do your homework before buying your particular Beetle, uh, then shame on you because you know what? It's flooded with information. 
uh, the specific years. It's all on the internet. You can go on YouTube, you can go on Google and search for this stuff. The Samba is a great resource for historical documentation and characteristics for your particular Beetle. For example, say you're looking at a 63 Beetle and you buy this car and then when you bring it home, you see it has the wrong deck lid. It's got the push button deck lid. You see it's got the wrong turn signals on the front fenders. It's the fatter turn signals as opposed to the skinnier uh, turn signals. Characteristics like that people overlook when they don't do their homework and when, when they go to inspect the car. And also, you know, when you are doing your homework too, part of the um, searching you need to do also is what to look out for before buying a bug. You know, many I have a multi-part series on this that I did a, a bunch of years ago, and rust is huge with these cars, guys. So do your homework. You know this this information is out there, and uh, if you miss something, you know maybe you didn't do enough homework. I don't know, <laughs> but we always do miss something every now and then. Even sometimes I miss something, but um, you can't do enough homework. Uh, so you know, tidy up on that stuff. Get stuff organized, even if you got to write things down. Uh, before you go to look at the car, um, you got to have your questions in order uh, to make the right purchase. And number seven, not driving the bug. Guys, I see so many cars online that are for sale. They look absolutely gorgeous, fully restored, beautiful show pieces. And you buy that car, you know, through the internet, you have it shipped in and it runs like absolute crap. Running is crucial. It is huge. Uh, I mean, it, it makes up like to me. I mean, geez, good 50% of the reason why you, you say yes or no. It's it's 50 50 at that point, you know, um, if not, you got to really bring the price down if the car does not run right. Uh, I see guys that go through full restorations that look absolutely gorgeous and they put all their time and energy into the look and feel and and uh the characteristic of the beetle but when you finally get in and turn the key and it runs like absolute crap that sucks yes mechanical things can get fixed on your own uh, but you really need to check i mean i i used I, I bought a bug once and thankfully i have a shop here so we can work on things but many of you people do not so uh, i i bought a bug once before had it shipped in spoke to the seller on the phone had an inspector look at it and uh, when we got the car, you know, the compression was really low in the engine. It had just no power. Uh, the inspector thought it was kind of normal, 25 horse, 36 horsepower. He thought it was pretty normal because that sounds like a low number. But when I drove the car, um, man, it just had no power whatsoever. So that was now calls for taking the engine out and um, a rebuild. Uh, so, yeah. Got to be careful of that. So driving the Beetle, uh, if you could see the car again in person, uh, that would be great. Uh, so you can uh, shift it, stop it, you know, e-brake, hit the brakes, turn the steering wheel. Is the car staying straight down the road? Is it is it wavering? You know, are the brakes going to the floor, not going to the floor? Um, you know, is there power going up a hill? Do you got to do a lot of downshifting to give it some more power? You know, there's a lot of things you got to feel with it. And just sitting in that seat and even just vibration, the bugs v vibrate. And uh, you'll know if something's right or wrong. And um, yeah, so definitely those are my seven uh, mistakes that most people make uh, when buying a vintage Volkswagen Beetle. Again, if you have any other additional comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And please be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And I will be bringing you VW videos each and every week. And uh, yeah, guys. I'll see you next time.